Okay, up here at Bear Canyon, I'm actually very surprised that the gate was opened at the bottom of this canyon, considering everywhere else is closed. Up here in Nephi Canyon on the Alpine Loop, or not correction, not the Alpine Loop, but the Nebel Loop. And up here at Bear Canyon, and just going to walk around, see what we see, maybe hear what we can hear. Um, as far as I'm aware, I am the only person up here. And there's not a whole lot of snow in this area, at least. I don't know if I'll be coming up on any knee-deep snow, but nonetheless, I'm glad just to be out here. I've been wanting to get up here for some time. I was going to walk up here. It's about a mile from the main turnoff to get up in here. Ponderosa campground just below us is open. Um, and I'm just really excited, waiting for this snow to burn off so we can get back up here in the back country. I love it. Wind coming through the through the pines. Beautiful day out here. A little bit overcast. But I couldn't ask for it to be any better. I think tomorrow we're gonna do an adventure up in the Uinas, which is about close to an hour and a half away from where I'm at right now. Uh, I wanna go hike up Shingle Creek Trailhead and see what we see or hear up in that area. But for now, this is no work. I'm just happy to be, be up here and to know that it's back open. Like I said, I've been waiting for some time for this to open back up and pretty sure I'm the only one out here. Pretty quiet out here. Not a whole lot there in that stream coming down. I've actually never been on this specific trail. I have no idea where it leads or goes. About 300 yards further up from where I'm at is another trailhead, which is actually the Bear Canyon trailhead, and that's the one I've been on a couple of times. But this one, I haven't. So we'll just see where it takes us. Maybe we'll hike around here for a few hours, sit down and talk about some, some things that have been on my mind in regards to, to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Neanderthal, the Yeti. So many different names that this thing has. And honestly, I don't know if anybody, I, I don't know if there really is a specific name for it. I know that when you talk to Native Americans, they've got different names for it. Depending on the region of the U.S. that you're in, they've got different names for it. So, I guess... In layman's terms, you just label it or stamp it, identify it with whatever fits into your vocabulary. But I think that once you get away from the mainstream label of it all, it really does beg the question, what exactly is out here? And it's not one and the same. There's different variations. There's different temperaments. As I've said before, I have to believe that they're like people. And you just don't know what you're going to get if you happen to have an encounter with one of these things. Another interesting side note, a lot of people who have had encounters wish that they never had they could live their day and their life so much better knowing that something like that didn't cross their path in their life. A lot of people suffer from PTSD. 
a lot of people afraid to come forward because of ridicule and quite honestly who are you to tell it's not like you're gonna call your local law enforcement and tell them hey I seen a upright bipedal seven and a half to ten foot tall beast humanoid it wasn't a bear it wasn't a human just isn't gonna happen. People are hesitant. And people say, careful what you wish for. And I agree with that. Do be careful what you wish for. But in these circumstances, I don't know what it is that's driving me to find the truth or to at least solidify or verify in my own mind what it is that's out there. And again, if I'm lucky and fortunate enough to have a sighting or two at least, however brief or long that sighting may be, to have that validate in my mind that there is something out here. Even though I believe it, there's just nothing like seeing it. And I know a lot of people, again, say careful what you wish for. But it's one of those things that I almost, I, I want it to happen. And of course, I want to die over it, but short of dying, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. <clears throat> I just feel like that there's a lot of unknowns out here. And whether I hear tree breaks, whether I hear banging of the sounds of wood or rocks, something that's pretty uh, evident that would be consistent with what people are describing, um, I'll be happy with that. But I'll be more happy seeing one. Do I know how I'm going to react to that? No. Do I like to think I know how I'm going to react to that? Yes. But all I can do is be out here as much as I can and realize that I am in their backwoods. This is their territory. And they're more likely to see me know my presence well before I'll ever know of theirs and even if I do see one and even with all the information I do have and even with the tree structures the prints that I've seen the sounds that I've heard in the mountains that would be consistent with what people are saying or Bigfoot, I still have that drive to want to see one. And that drive continues every day. And I guess I won't stop until I have my opportunity to, to validate and verify that for myself. Beautiful country, though, up here. Beautiful country. And if anything, it's just nice to be out here in the, in the woods. Get away from the city and get away from all the, the things in life. It's an opportunity just to, just to be out here. And the weird thing is I, I grew up hunting I grew up going with my father in the mountains and hunting and everything that goes along with that and I kind of got out of it for a number of years, even into my adult years. And it's only been in the last few years where this topic has really struck me to the core 
that I'm doing my due diligence to get out here back out in the woods and to hopefully bring more knowledge understanding to this whole phenomena and as weird maybe even scary at times depending on the time of day I uh, I don't know I just feel like that whatever encounter I do have will be meant to be, so to speak. Maybe it won't. But whether I see one or not, I think that there's been enough evidence there for me to, to know deep down that there is something out there. Credible witnesses, personal friends of mine who have had encounters, who have seen these things. And again, with absolutely nothing to gain by telling their story, they say it, they tell it, and the only thing that they leave with the people is, I'm not here to convince you, this is my story, I know what I saw, and I can't convince anybody else of that. And it's not about convincing anybody. I do believe in sharing knowledge and understanding that there is something out here. And a lot of us are outdoorsmen. We like to camp, we like to be out in the woods, whether it be for long durations of time or short durations. And the fact of the matter is, I believe or I feel like it's a disservice to, to others. When those of us who know that there's something out there and who have had encounters to not voice their opinions and to not let people know. That's a disservice, I believe. And we can't think that way. It's almost like we gotta safeguard others. Let people know when they take to the woods that there is that probability, just as there's a probability for running into bears and cougars and mountain lions, whatever you want to call them. It's all out here. All right. Just taking a bit of a break here. It's sprinkling off and on. It's windy. It's quiet. Actually, I don't know if it's really as quiet as it seems just because of the wind going through the <coughs> trees. But uh, I haven't seen anybody up here. Just me. And I don't know. I keep looking back. I'll, I'll walk maybe 20, 25 yards, turn around, look back, scan. I hate having the, the lower ground. I like having the higher ground, obviously. Just like to have an advantage, whether it's in, you know, for people or animals or whatever. It doesn't always seem to be that way out here. Nonetheless, I'm loving it out here. Something about being out here all by yourself. And back in my mind, I keep thinking, yeah, there's there's something out here that knows I'm out here already. I, I couldn't hear if anything would be flanking me or not. And you hear that so much with people that they'll be out in the woods and these things will be keeping the same pace, same number of steps. And it's just unbelievable. And yet these people don't see them in the tree line. So they obviously have some sort of capabilities or whatever, some sort of extra senses, if you will to be able to navigate and do these things that they can do without detection. Seems odd to me. But I'm out here, I'm, I'm constantly scanning the area. I'm scanning up, I'm scanning low. I'm looking for tree breaks, I'm looking for tree structures, I'm looking for footprints, I'm hearing my, I feel like I'm in this hyper sense of awareness for any type of, of wood knocks or screams or hollers or anything that may sound 
out of character for anything out here. And, and that's really what this is about. I, I enjoy that. Um, obviously with the wind today, it makes it a little bit more difficult to determine whether or not I'm truly alone, but you hear so many times people documenting incidences where the forest goes dead silent. And by that, no birds chirping, nothing. You can hear a pin drop. And that seems to be kind of a prelude when these things are around. I don't know what's to be said about that. What creature has that ability to make everything just go dead silent if that's what happens. I do know for a fact that last year, coming up almost on a year, up in the Uinas, we were at an elevation of about 10,500 feet. It's about 9.30 in the elk were bugling back and forth. Coyotes were yelping, doing their thing. And then right after those coyotes, we hear this. I don't even know how to describe it. Almost like a lion roar mixed with a holler. I don't even, to try to replicate it would be just absolutely impossible. But, but I do know the lungs on this thing, whatever it was, was just immense. And when it sounded off, I tell you what, that forest went dead. Anyhow, the forest went completely silent. It went dead, almost as if this thing or the animals around it knew of its dominance, knew that it is the king of the forest. I have no idea what it was. All I know is that it shut that forest down for at least two and a half hours, and you could drop a pin up there and could hear it. So I get it when people say that when these things are around, it goes dead silent, because I've experienced that. And it's an eerie, eerie feeling. It truly is. What has that capability to silence everything? I don't know. But I keep listening, I keep keep hoping. All I can do is keep keep hoping and keep being out here. That's all I can do. And I enjoy it. I wouldn't be out here if it wasn't a twofold thing. I enjoy being out here. The serenity. It's away from all the BS in this world and what have you, just to get out here.